Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got a really interesting pattern for you today. Now this one comes from Joe Sather. He found it in David Klausmeyer's Favorite Flies. I took a look at it and said, I recognize that, that's a Catskill fly. I checked it out. It was also in a couple of my Mike Vala books, his classic dry fly box, and then tying the founding flies. So what is this pattern? It's called the Woodruff. Other than the history that Mike Vala talks about, I couldn't find much information at all about this fly. Not a whole lot online, certainly didn't see any videos of it, so this will be a first. You know, it's a fairly standard Catskill dry fly, and Mike Vala tells a good story of its origin. It was created in 1920 by Chester Mills. Now, Chester worked for William Mills and Son Tackle House of New York City. So the story goes, lots of these folks at their fly fishing club on the upper beaver kill were having dinner one night. Somebody comes in and says, hey, the fish are rising, let's go out. And earlier, Chester had tied up a bunch of these flies and offered them to a lot of folks, and Johnny Woodruff was the only one that took him up on them. So they all rush out of dinner, go out, hit the river, and everybody gets skunked but Johnny Woodruff. And he's fishing this brand new fly that Chester just created. So I guess they get back into the house and say, hey, what is that fly? So Chester says, I'm calling it the Woodruff. The rest of y'all got skunked and Johnny's the only one who caught any fish with it. So pretty interesting story. Now, what about the fly? What is this? Well, it's uh, not real heavily hackled, but it's a fairly typical Catskill fly. I'd say it's pretty much an attractor pattern, maybe a fluttering caddis. You could fish this in some fast riffled water or just skitter it along the top like a caddis. And it's a pretty cool pattern. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there we go in the vise. This is the woodruff. You can see we got some spent wings right there, or almost spent. They could be a little bit flatter if you really want. I'm tying this on a size 12. It's a 1X long dry fly hook, and I'm gonna use white thread in a 70 denier. I'm not gonna take it all the way back, just put it on the first third of the hook, and then leave my thread about a third way back hanging. That's where we're gonna tie in the, the wings. Like a lot of cat skill flies, the wings are some of the first things you tie in. And these wings are just grizzly, grizzly tips. So make sure you get your tips lined up. And if you can, you know, get the, the dark bars outside. I don't think it's that big a deal because we're going to, you know, tie it spent anyway. So measure your length. Probably right there, if I envision that. Maybe a little bit shorter than that. So catch these in right on top with a couple of wraps. Okay, those are still coming off the top. And then spend a few wraps to just lock this in before we reach in here and trim these off. We don't want to build up too much on the body. So that's going to be fine right there. Take your thread back up to where the base of these wings are, and we're going to pull them back. See those fibers sticking forward? There's not much you can do about that. We're going to end up having to trim them anyway. So put a few wraps right here just to stand this thing up perpendicular. And then as those fibers point forward, I'm just going to go ahead and trim them. It's probably not that important because the hackle would hide a lot of that, but it might just make it a little bit easier for us to tie. So when you got your wings sticking up, we're gonna, see they're not angled out like we want, so we're gonna spread them out and put some figure eights, some X wraps behind them. Just to, to widen them out a little bit and give us that, that spinner type look. So I think, you know, two X wraps usually will work. And don't worry about getting it perfect. We can always use the hackle that we're gonna wrap in a minute. Uh, to help position them. So go ahead and take your thread back to the start of the bend. We're going to tie in the tail. And the tail on this is just one of the bigger feathers from this same cape. Now this is an option here. In Klaus Meyer's book he had a really, really long tail, but in Mike Vala's Tying the Founding Flies, it was not as long, I would say closer to a, a body length. So that's what I'm going to tied in at. I think it's going to look just a little better. I don't necessarily want the really long tail. I mean, lots of cat skill flies have some pretty long tails, uh, and I think what we have right there is plenty long enough. So do I need to snip some of these? Probably so. Let's just get in here and clean this up. I could probably bury those, but they're a little bit 
those stems are a little bit long, so I'm gonna trim it up before I tie in my, or dub the body. So smoothing this out a little bit, because it's a pretty thin, thinly dubbed body. So take your thread right back to where we're gonna start it, put some wax on it. And the dubbing on this is, it's a rabbit. It is a, let's see, this olive brown right there, and then a, a pale yellow underneath, probably mixed in about a 50-50. You'll get something that looks about like this. So I'm gonna dub it on pretty thin and pretty tight. And we can get a little bit of a taper if you want, but it's not all that vital, I don't think. So I'm spinning this pretty tight. Got about two inches of a noodle there. We'll see how far up that gets us. Might have to trim too. I see a couple of guard hairs wanting to poke out. Okay, that's a pretty tight, small body like we want, but I need just a little bit more. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. Now here was where another place where these two flies differed. Klaus Meyer's book, he used a ginger hackle, and in Mike Vala's, he used a brown. So I'm gonna go with the ginger. I think it looks just a little bit better and light, but if you've got brown and that's all you got, use it. It looks, it looks really good with a brown hackle on it too. So catch this in with two or three tight wraps behind it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and catch this stem in in front of the, the wings too. And this one's a little long, so I'm gonna have to go in here and snip off this excess and smooth out that little butt right there. And I'm gonna put probably two wraps behind these wings and three or four in front of it. Uh, it's not a real heavily hackled fly, but you do want these fibers maybe two hook gaps long, maybe twice as long as a, as a hook gap. So that's two behind it, and there's two in front of it. So let's see what three in front does. I think I'm gonna go one more. I'm gonna put four in front of it before I catch this off. I think that's gonna be fine right there. Two thread wraps to lock this hackle in place. And do I wanna go ahead and snip it? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and snip it and then work on my head. I could try and smooth out the head before doing this, but I think we can do that right there. And it's angled down on me. I pulled it a little bit too much. So let's poke it back up. Now I'm gonna just pull this back ever so slightly and clean up this head. I don't want them swept back at all, but I do want a little room for the whip finish. And like a lot of cat skill flies, you, you do have uh, you know, a, a decent distance between the eye and the hackle. You know, you don't have the hackle right up to the eye. So that is just maybe it's tradition. I don't know why they usually do that, but it, you'll see that is the case in a lot of Catskill dry flies. So there we go. Go ahead and snip the thread off right here. And if we have any cleanup, now's the time to do it. Um, got a few long fibers coming off of that rabbit right there I could trim, but it's not really even necessary. So that's it, the Woodruff. And I've got, that tail isn't all that smooth. I need to clean that up and pluck a couple of those out. There we go, that looks a little bit better. So that's it my friends, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.